Hello and welcome to chapter 1.1, SI Measurement. SI stands for System International. It's kind of the system we use for measurement in Canada. It's also sometimes called metric. And if you think of the word metric, think of meter, kilometer, centimeter, millimeter, all those types of measurement are metric. The instruments that we use to measure are a ruler and be as accurate as you can. So if you look at your ruler and you see that it's halfway in between two ticks, put a 0.5. If it's all the way to the next tick, all the way to the next tick. So be as accurate as you can. Estimate. Vernier calipers is the next type of measurement we have. And I'm going to show you a little demonstration here. So on a Vernier caliper, we have what is called the fixed scale and the moving scale. On the fixed scale, the numbers stay the same all the way across. You have 0, 1, 2, just like a ruler, 3, 4. So the, the fixed scale is just like a ruler. The moving scale has these numbers 0 through 10 on this caliper. Some calipers are different. So this one, each tick, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, each tick is worth a tenth, a tenth of a centimeter. So each tick would be worth a millimeter or a tenth of a millimeter. So here we go. I'm starting with the moving scale. I move it over just to see how these numbers change. Now, let's see how this works. How do they get 0 0.25? Well, let's see. The first big number that I see is 0 on the fixed scale. Next thing I go do, do is go down to the moving scale and see where is the 0. Which tick is it passed from the fixed scale? Well, it's passed 1, 2, yeah, it's just passed the second one. So 0 0.2. And then I see which tick on the moving scale lines up perfectly with the fixed scale. And I see that one, two, three, four, oh, the fifth one. So the fifth one matches up perfectly. That Therefore, it's 0 0.25. Let's try another one here. Let's try this one here. So again, I look where the zero is passed, the big number, is one. So one is the first number I have, just like zero was the first number I had before. So one point, now let's see, the zero is past the one, two right? It's past the second tick. So it's got to be 1.2. Then I see which line matches up. Oh, it's the first one. Notice how these other ones are quite off. So the first one matches up, so it's 1.21. 1 1.21. 1 Notice how that works. You go from the big scale, 1, to the little tick, 2, to the moving scale, 1. One more. Let's see if I go past here, if I go past 2. Now, notice I'm past 2, so it's going to be 2. I then go to the, the first little ticks, which is 1, 2, 3. The 0 is past 3, so that's 2.3. And remember that each one of these ticks is worth a tenth. So 1, 2, 3, or a hundredth, sorry, a tenth of a, of a millimeter. So 1, 2, 3. So 2.33. Three. That's how they get that number down there. You can play around with this more. I think I've included the Vernier caliper link um, on the notes. So back to the notes here. So those are Vernier calipers. The next thing we have are what are called reference. Reference are non-standard ways of measuring. So either your hand span or your finger or your leg or your foot. If you measured your hand span or your foot, and say you measured your foot to be approximately a foot, right? So about 12 inches long. If you pace off Say you're pacing off your yard to see how big your yard is. If you accurately measured your foot and you could say, okay, well, I paced off my yard, I went 50 paces that way, and then I went 20 paces the other way. You could accurately measure your yard and even how much area your yard uh, encompasses. So reference, you measure the referent first, and then you use that referent in order to measure. So, like this. Estimate the height of the screen using a referent. I'm going to use my on-screen calculator, my on-screen calculator. I'm also going to use this ruler that uses a form of measurement um, It's not standard. It's um, They say it's pixels, but I'm not quite sure of that. I think it might be pixels. So if it's pixels, then I can say that this calculator is 310, 20, because each one of these ticks is worth 20. Be, be as accurate as you can, right? So it's, okay, so 310. We'll say 320. So I put my calculator up at the top of the screen. And I say, OK, it goes to about there. 
So then I move my calculator down. See, it's not accurate, right? We're just kind of estimating here. And then I put another tick here, roughly. And then I move my calculator down. Oh, notice that now it's off the screen. So I have what? I have one, two, and then a bit. And it was about to here. And let's say that that area, remember we're just estimating, that distance is say one to, say a third of the distance of the whole width of the calculator. And remember that my calculator was 320 pixels, I think it's a pixels, width. So I had 320 plus 320 plus, and remember it was about, we'll say about a third. Um, so one third of 320. Then I can use my calculator. I can say, well, what's a third of a 320? Let's see, divided by three. So I get 106.7. All right, so I add all these values together, plus 320, plus 320, and I get 746.7. And we'll say that those are pixels. So let's say that my screen is about 746 pixels down. Well, that's a pretty good accurate measurement. I think it's actually about 800 pixels. So it's not perfect. I'm about 54 pixels off or so, but I mean, that's not too, too bad. Using a referent, and I measured the calculator, and I figured out what it was. So I like I said, I think it's about 800 pixels down. I got 746.7, so not a bad estimate, but then you would actually go and measure it with a ruler to see what the actual measurement is. Next example. State a more appropriate SI measurement and then convert. So I'm telling you that my hand span or a hand span is 0 0.1524 meters. For more appropriate measurements and conversions, check your data pages, please. So print off these data pages, use them for every quiz, every test, every assignment. If I'm looking at meters, I'm trying to find out where my meters are. Well, I don't see meters there. Okay, here's imperial metric. Okay, well, these are conversions. I'm not converting to imperial metric yet. Um, here's, oh, here's metric. Oh, here I see meters, and here I see meters too. Now, if you're talking about your hand span, probably a more appropriate measurement would be centimeters. And notice that there are 100 centimeters for every meter. So if I'm converting these to centimeters, there's going to be more centimeters than there are meters. There's more of them. They're smaller, but there's more of them. So that means I have to multiply. And my conversion factor was 100. When you're multiplying by 100, you take your decimal place and you move it one, two places for every zero that is there. So I end up getting 15.24 centimeters. So pick a better SI measurement and then convert using your data pages. All right, here's the last example and there's a good hint for your your turn quiz. Here I have suppose the inner rim of a wheel. So I'm going to draw a wheel circle. Let's draw it a bit better. So here is my circle has a circumference of 2.3. So here's my wheel, it's got a circumference of 2.3, the inner rim. So the inner rim basically just means that it's the circumference of the circle. Each spoke is 0 0.2 meters long. So I have a spoke going to the center part and then going right through. So each one of these spokes is 0 0.2 meters long. What is the diameter of the center hub and what is the diameter of the wheel? So if the circumference is equal to 2.3 and the circumference is equal to the pi times the diameter, then I know that the circumference, which is 2.3, is equal to my pi times my diameter. If I want to solve for diameter, I have to divide by pi because multiplication and division are opposite operations. So I divide by pi, divide by pi. When I'm using the when I'm dividing by pi, don't use 3.14. Use the pi button. So when I'm dividing, I divide by pi. I get 0 0.732. 0 0.732. And that's equal to the diameter of the big wheel. So that's equal to the diameter going straight through the center all the way to the other side straight through the center all the way to the other side, right through the center of the entire thing. So my diameter of my big wheel is equal to 0 
what is the diameter of the center hub and what is the diameter of the wheel? Well, the wheel we just found was 0 0.732. The center hub, remember that each spoke is 0 0.2 meters long. So I have to eliminate those 0 0.2 on the top and the 0 0.2 on the bottom to be left with the diameter on the inside. So I would take 0 0.732 and I would subtract off the 0 0.2 from the top and subtract off the 0 0.2 from the bottom. So I get 7, whoops, 0 0.732 minus 0.2 minus 0.2, which is equal to 0 0.332, 0 0.332. And that would be the diameter, and that's in meters, the diameter of the center hub. So make sure you watch through. Uh, hopefully that helps, especially the hint for the your turn quiz. And um, all your instruments for measurement, make sure you have a ruler handy at all times.